Okay, guys, it's the end of April, going into May. I got the radar. I like the new look. I'm going to take it out to the jetty, run the radar a little bit. I'm either going to stay at the jetty or I'm going to go to a local spot about five miles out. I'm not going to go that far today because I'm getting a late start. I'm just out here to get everything dialed in right now. Well guys, this was a quick one. I got about a hundred yards, the water pump quit. Never gave me any indication before of any problem, but luckily I bought a rebuilding kit. And if I didn't burn the housing up, I'm going to go home and, and do a video on changing out the water pump. Boy, I like the way this boat is sitting here with my new Lowrance radar. Next trip, maybe I'll get to use it. Okay, what we're doing today is water pump. Uh, something happened to it. I'm not sure yet. We're going to pull the lower unit off. I got it home. I got it tilted up. And... We're going to take the bolts out. These are these are 9 16 bolts here. You got six of these um, just looking for my wrench 9 16. You got six, three on each side. And I use a box wrench because I don't want to scratch uh, the paint with a um, with a socket. Now I just had this apart when I bought the boat. I looked at the pump. The pump looked in real good shape. Um, so I don't know what happened here. These still have fresh grease. I put fresh grease on these. And um, for some reason, <clears throat> it wasn't pumping today. Gorgeous day, too. I can't believe this. What a day. So you got three on each side here. It's three on the other side. You got one underneath this cap. That's a half inch under the cap. That takes the um, the zinc off of there because there's a bolt up underneath the zinc, so you want to get the zinc off. You might want to mark it so you put it back the same way. Okay, and then underneath. There's one up here. That's a 14 millimeter. We'll just loosen that. We'll leave it there loose. And then right below it is another 14 millimeter. So we'll get that one out. We'll get the three off on this side here. Then the housing should come right off. Like I said, I had it off about a year ago. So it should come right off. Okay, so we got the last bolt here it's starting to separate. You want to support this and wiggle it out. I'm gonna have to maybe get a rag. Okay, I'm gonna get a glove. Okay, so I got a glove on because the skeg is a little sharp. So you want to support it and get your last bolt out. Now you want your shifting mechanism in neutral. I have it in neutral.
Okay, that's the last bolt. Put it down over there. So now this should come right down. And don't let it hang on the shaft, otherwise you'll bend the shaft. Just pull it straight down. And that's it, she's out. Now when you put it back, it's very important to line up the shift mechanism with the shifter. Um, because this can shift on you, and when you put it back up, it doesn't line up. You won't be able to put it in gear. Okay, everything looks good there. I hope we didn't burn the, the housing, but I'm going to get it into the garage. And then we're going to take the pump apart. Okay, so we got it up here on the table. Luckily, I have a kit that I had bought before, like a couple weeks ago. I just got that actually because the boat has over 300 hours on it and um, the, the person I got it off of didn't know if the pump was ever changed so it probably wasn't so this is probably the original and um, 300 hours that was pushing it okay I'm gonna get a ratchet now to get this off Okay, so we got all the the bolts out of there and this was a 12 millimeter or half inch uh, fits it So we got all them out of there now you want to mark the location if you're not sure this faces the prop So you put it back Then you just wiggle the housing till it comes loose Okay. Luckily our housing is good still. We didn't burn it up. Okay, that's the stainless piece where the impeller rides. And there's the impeller. So Get that out of here. Now you want to make sure you see which way these are these are turning so you put it the same way. So the shaft turns the shaft turns clockwise facing the shaft down turns clockwise. We'll put that there. Now the keyway, we're going to have to get a, a hammer and a punch or a, a screwdriver to get the keyway out. Hopefully it's not that tight. And we're going to have to remove this to get this plate off. There's a little dirt in there, but I, I'll look underneath that plate when I get it off see what's going on here. I don't see anything that major uh, would have happened to it. Okay, so we remove this. It's the same thing, 12 millimeter. Don't turn that, leave that where it is. This plate, once we get the key out, we'll get this plate off. Okay, so I have a ball peen hammer and I have a, a punch, a small punch. And you want to put it up against the key and give it a couple of taps. These things could be 
could be tight. Try not to hit the shaft. This one is moving. I'll see if I can grab it. Nope. Okay, I might have to get a center. <clears throat> okay, I got the center punch on there and got it up. So now I'm gonna grab it with a pair of vice grips. And give them a tap. This is probably the hardest part of the whole job is getting this key out of there. Okay, we got her out. Now, you want to clean, I got to clean the shaft. I, I nicked it a little bit when I was using this center punch. But we'll get this plate off of here now. And there's a gasket under it, so just pry it. Pry it off lightly. If you have a screwdriver, use a screwdriver or a putty knife. What do I got here? Putty knife. Okay. Alright. So work it off. There's a gasket under it which is going to be replaced. Okay. okay, there's the plate, and it looks like it only goes one way, so. Okay, that's off. Okay, we're going to clean this up with a scotch bright. You don't want to scratch it or anything. Scotch bright. And these pins, I believe they give you new ones. I might just leave them in there. And you want to check this rubber here. That looks good. The exhaust. Okay. I'm gonna clean the shaft up a little bit. I don't see any oil leaking out around the seal. I really don't see what was the problem with this, really, unless this just from sitting over the winter too long, it lost its um, elasticity. All right, I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna put it back together. Okay, so I cleaned all this up with a Scotch-Brite and should have cleaned this a little bit here. Let me do that. Okay, so we cleaned everything up with a Scotch-Brite. We didn't put any nicks. You don't want any nicks on the surface. So that's all clean. I put a light film of uh, grease on everything. I greased up the shifting spline. So we're gonna get our gasket and see which way this goes on. Could only go one way, so it goes on like this. A 
over the dowel alignment pins. And then our plate, our new stainless plate, goes on right on the gasket okay now I'm gonna get the key to put the key in okay so they give you these lip seals and this is a retainer that you take off of there and then push these out make sure you look at how they go in so you put them back in the same way okay that's the first one and there's the second one I want to make sure I see how it goes in So the lips on the seals, the lip, that's the lip, they go one on top of the other. The lip faces outward. Okay, I'm going to put a little grease in there. Not much, just enough get the seals down in there you don't want them to hang up okay. okay we'll get that one down I'm gonna get something like a socket to go on top of that so I could push down on it without damaging it and let me Okay, let me look for that. Okay, so I got one in there. I pushed it down with the socket. And the other one, like I said, faces the same way with the lip up. Okay, that one is in there. And we'll put our retainer back on there. It just pops right in there. These, I don't know, I save everything. I'll just put them in the box. What they don't give you is this seal here which I don't know why they don't give you that one, but I don't see it here. Okay, so next uh, we're gonna put the new O-rings. Two new O-rings. I'm gonna put a little grease where the O-ring is gonna go to help hold it in place because you don't want it moving on you. And then the same thing on this one. And a couple of key areas. I'm gonna put the grease. Okay, that should be good enough. We're gonna grease these here while we got my finger dirty. Now I got the key 
I called it a keyway before. It's the key. The keyway is the slot in the shaft. The key is what goes in the slot. I have it in the freezer. And what that does is going to shrink the key. I worked in factories as a millwright. We used to use liquid nitrogen on fits, fitting stuff together. So by shrinking the key, it's going to go into the slot easier. And hopefully I don't have to do a lot of hammering. Now I got a steel punch. I can't find brass punch. You would want something softer, brass or copper. But I'm going to be careful with that one when I put it in. Okay, so we'll get these in place. I want to make sure they go into the groove and the grease is going to hold them there. Okay, so we got our O-ring in there. Now we're going to insert our stainless steel housing. And this goes one way. These little tits go down in those two grooves there. That keeps it from spinning. And this is your water pickup which faces the hole there. So now it's locked in there so it doesn't doesn't move. Okay, now we could get our our big O ring on. I'm gonna get a little more grease on there to hold it. Just around this end here. Okay, you don't want a whole ton of grease. is the new o-ring that goes in the groove like so okay that's in there so we'll take the grease that's left and we'll we'll put a coat on the inside where the impeller is going to run this way. It helps it on the initial start. You know, you don't burn anything up. So you want to coat all that. And then our impeller, this is for the key, so that face is down. And remember which way it was turning. So we want to put it in the same way. You want to bend the impeller so it turns clockwise. In there. Okay, like I said, that has to face up so it goes over the key. So we'll start again here. It's getting a little greasy right now. Okay, there we go. Got her in there. Okay, that's ready. There's a lot more tension on the, compared to the old impeller. I, I could see this one's a lot better. Now the old one I said, there's a little over 300 hours on it. I got the boat with 250, I think. I checked the water pump, it looked good. I asked the person I bought it off of if he knows when it was changed, because he got the boat off of his neighbor. He said he didn't know. 100 hour service, you check the pump. 200 hour you change it so I don't know if it was changed it probably wasn't because it, it failed so there's 300 and something hours on so don't go any more than what they recommend on these pumps because they're very critical I mean I luckily caught it in time nothing got hot nothing overheated I was close to the dock 
I got back to the dock with my trolling motor so I didn't run this engine and there's no damage to it okay okay now we're gonna get this piece back on Put a little grease on the threads here. Okay, let me bolt this up. Okay, run these in evenly. I don't know if there's a torque spec for that, but you don't want to over tighten these. Just snug them up because that's plastic and you could have big problems. Okay, we're going to get the key and get that in place. Okay, I got the key out of the freezer. Now you want to put some grease in the slot. You want to get it in there as centered as possible. Okay, and then just tap it till it goes down. Don't hammer, super hammer on it. If it doesn't go in like it should, then it's crooked or something. So you want it to go in there very snug, but straight and uh, tight. That could be your hardest problem on the whole job, is taking that out and putting it back in. Okay. So that's done. Okay, so we got our pump assembly. I'm gonna put a little grease on the plate because the impeller could rub on the plate. Just a fine coating, that's all. The shaft is greased up. They give you new bolts, <clears throat> new bolts with it. I put grease on the threads. <clears throat> so they're ready to go. So your impeller has a keyway on the one end. So that's the end that faces the plate. And you wanna slide this on easily. And then you want to get it lined up so in my case it's up on the top and our keyway is facing up and I put some grease on the shaft okay so now she's in the she's in the keyway make sure uh, you want to make sure this o-ring stays in place starting to slip a little bit you don't want to lose that o-ring <clears throat> okay so everything looks good get your alignment pin lined up like I said this face is the impeller and then push it over the the alignment pins okay hold it in there and get a bolt started You want to get one run up to hold the housing so it doesn't move. You don't want the housing to move because then you could lose the O-ring, the position of the O-ring. So just snug that up. Get your other three bolts in place. Now again, this is a plastic housing, so you don't want to over tighten it. There could be a torque spec, like I said. In other videos, I don't go by torque really on something that's not critical. Head bolts, connecting rod, 
caps and all that <clears throat> I would torque but um, something like this just want to get them all snugged up now I'll go from corner to corner feel it going down and like I said it's plastic so you don't want to kill it okay I'm gonna leave it like that this one is on there okay so that's our pump Everything's back together. This rubber piece is in place. Everything looks good. So that's a rebuild on the pump. All right, if you liked watching, I have other how to do it videos on different things on the boat. And um, we're going to get this back in place. And uh, I'm going to get a barrel, put it in the barrel, and then we're going to fire it up and make sure it's, uh, it's circulating this time. All right, so before we go out there with it, you want to grease this spline really, really good. You don't want any grease on the top, but the teeth... You want grease in the teeth, pack the teeth. Okay, we did this one already here. This way when it comes apart, it'll come apart easy. Then I like to put some grease on this surface here. So it doesn't get fused to the other part and that's about it we're going to be installing this uh, shortly okay that's all done all right we're going to get it outside back to the boat and I'll catch us out there Okay, so while you're here, you just want to check everything underneath. Make sure everything is in order. And I'm going to put a little grease on some of these things. This is the shifter shaft. That, you want to make sure you line it up. And this is a seal here that's going to go in the pump. Okay, so we got everything ready underneath here. We got grease on everything. Let me put some grease on that pin. The pins could get you stuck. They could hang you up when you take it apart. So let me get these two pins. You want to make sure they're greased. Okay. All right, so we're ready. So we'll grab this the same way it came out. Let me get a glove on. Okay. Want to get the shaft started up in there. You want it straight. don't want it hanging on the shaft okay. and then 
got to get the spline lined up on the engine. Okay, we got that. Now you want to have a bolt where you can reach it because you can't let this go or it'll drop on you. So you want a bolt where you can reach it and get it started. And that'll hold your unit. Because you're going to have to get the shifting. You got to make sure the shifter is in place. And I need a break. Okay, guys. I had to put something to hold the weight. I couldn't hold the weight anymore. You know, when you get older, these things, uh, these things aren't that easy to do anymore. And the shifting uh, mechanism wasn't in place, so I had to pull it back down again, align up the spline, and then I got it in place. You got to get the shifting mechanism and the engine spline done at the same time. You know, it was really, um, really difficult. Um, okay, so we're going to get all the bolts in. These six bolts, we're going to bring it up a little bit with the wrench. Then we're going to get these bolts in and then tighten everything up. And we should be all set. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm just wiggling it up and tightening and wiggling. So it's almost seated. So now I'm going to get these bolts in here and And that'll be it. Grease up your bolts. Put that one on the socket. The long one, this is the long one. All the other ones are all the same. The long one goes underneath the, the zinc, the zinc tab. Get some grease on that. You know, I might not take this apart for 200 hours, maybe 500 hours. Um, I'll change it out again. Naturally, I have to have the most expensive water pump for a 250. The pump was $150, but it's original equipment. Okay, I'm gonna get all these tight. I'm gonna clean up the zinc tab, put that back in there, and then uh, we're done. Okay, guys, we pulled this up evenly. It's closed all the way even, all the way around. All the bolts are tight. We're gonna put our our zinc tab on, on there. And you wanna put some pretty good tightness on these. Um, don't be afraid to tighten them. Now you're not gonna believe this. Now, I'm here tightening the bolts up and I'm looking around. And I'm looking at the, they call it a pisser. It pisses water out to show you that your pump is working. There's something in there. There's a material in there which plugged it up. Now, I, I, I guess it would be, it's like sandy. 
I guess it would be those wasps, those um, those wasps that build those nests out of mud. Plugged it up. They must have plugged it up on me. I was looking at that water pump when I was taking it apart. I really didn't see anything that uh, would indicate it was bad. The impeller wasn't torn up or nothing. But um, looks like that's what it is. So I'm gonna pull the cowl off, get in there, see if I can pop that out and clean it, make sure there's nothing else up in the line. So that uh, concludes our water pump rebuild. It needed it anyway. You're better off um, error, erroring on the, the side of not doing any damage to the unit. You know, because if, if it happened offshore, and I'm gonna be going offshore a lot, so I'm gonna have peace of mind knowing that the water pump is is new now okay guys subscribe 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 and uh, watch the fishing videos coming up okay thanks for watching <laughs>